The South Carolina Library dates to 1840, was constructed by slave labor. The South Carolina College Board of Trustees took Robert Mills's plan, modified it, turned it to its present location on the Horseshoe. In 1940, with the movement of the main library to McKissick Museum, this building was set aside to house the South Carolina collection, which specifically focuses on South Carolina history, culture, the documentation of the state. So the collection itself is comprised both of manuscript materials, those are all unique, irreplaceable, original items, most of them being handwritten, maps, newspapers, the largest single newspaper collection of South Carolina focus in the entire world, uh, South Carolina photographs, uh, pieces of artwork such as portraits, pieces of statuary that depict South Carolinians of early eras, earlier eras and even of today. Materials that are quite different in focus such as oral histories. Arguably the most significant manuscript acquisition of the South Carolina Library is the manuscript diary of Confederate diarist Mary Boykin Chestnut. Mary Chestnut was a resident of Camden, South Carolina, had grown up as a uh, daughter of a seating member of Congress, uh, had spent much time in Washington in her early years. On the eve of the Civil War, she began a diary which she kept throughout the war. This particular volume is that in which she records actually the gifting of a uh, photograph album in which she could collect carte de visite photos of those who were uh, well known uh, in the coming years of the Confederacy. The earliest manuscript item in the South Carolina Library's holdings dates from 1683. Louis Thibault, who was a Huguenot settler in Carolina, was writing in very uh, grand language, somewhat exaggerated language, uh, to uh, fellow Huguenots in France encouraging settlement in the new colony of Carolina. Richard Greener, who was the University of South Carolina's first African-American professor, came to the university in 1873 as a professor of moral philosophy, taught here through 1877. Greener's diploma, dating from 1876, is the sole example that we have found surviving today of a uh, Reconstruction era diploma issued to a student at that time. I think original documents to academic researchers and to others who are interested in history, uh, even to students who have a, an opportunity to touch a bit of history is an immediate way of connecting with the past. We like to think of the South Carolina Library truly as a library for the entire state of South Carolina, the library of the state of South Carolina.